Thank you, Kamika. Did you come expecting this morning? Yeah. Did you come looking for an open heaven? Yeah. Did you come to be fed this morning? Yeah. All right, well, let's just tear out the spirit in this house. Because the Holy Spirit is here. He's waiting on our worship. Amen. I should have came in here already ready to worship. Were you worshiping in your car? Because I was. I was this morning. I had a, we under an open heaven. Yeah. To begin to play that song. And then he's a way maker. I said, come on and speak to me, Jesus. Because I'm waiting on a move from you today. I come expecting miracles in the house. He said, if we are believers, then miracle signs and wonders shall follow us. Amen. Any miracles following you this morning? Any miracles following you this morning? Amen. Amen. Well, let's go into prayer this morning. Amen. Amen. Dear precious Heavenly Father God, Lord God, we just thank you this morning, Lord, for who you are, Lord. Lord, we thank you for just waking us up this morning, God, and touching our minds this morning, God. God, we thank you, God, for touching our limbs this morning, Lord, that we are able to move, oh God. And then, God, we thank you for touching our voice, Lord, because we are able to give you worship this morning, Father God. So, Holy Spirit, we just say, have your way in this place on today, oh God. Have your way in this house on today, oh God. Today, this is your service, Lord, and we're just here to worship you, Father God. So, God, just stir up the worship inside of us today, Jesus. Just stir the waters in the place on today, oh God. And, God, whatever it is that we need, God, we know that it is right here in this house, God. God, and everything we need, God, is in you today, oh God. And so, God, we give you glory today.
We're here to worship and praise God this morning. I need y'all to put y'all hands together and act like God has done something for you. Hallelujah, God. Woo! Come on, put your hands in the air. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all.
sits on the right hand. Amen? How many of you know that the son that sits on the right hand his name is Jesus? Amen. Jesus, the one who went to Calvary's cross, the one that died for us, the one that died for the remission of our sins. We're grateful this morning because we're able to reflect upon, amen, what Christ has done for us. I often say it, I thank God for Jesus. Amen, because without Jesus, I wouldn't have, or we wouldn't have, victory over all things. Somebody say, even death. Amen. Amen. We have victory over all things. Huh? Oh, death, where is your sting? Amen? But we're thankful this morning that we can partake in Holy Communion. I ask those that need to come forward, if you would come forward at this time, so that we can move forward in Holy Communion. As we reflect upon what Christ has done for us on the cross, the message never gets old. It's always a revelant story. It's always a revelant truth that Jesus died on the cross for us that we might have life and have life more abundantly. Amen. We're about to enter into this holy, holy communion, and I ask that we reverence ourselves um, for this moment. Amen. As we are going to partake. Amen. This is going to need your help on the slides in just a minute, if you don't mind. Amen. We're grateful and thankful for this moment. 
And we want to posture our minds towards the cross. Amen. We know that the message of the cross is foolishness to some, but it's the power of God to those that believe. So we are thankful and grateful for this moment of reflection. We don't want to enter into this like we're just doing this just to do it, but we want to enter into this moment because we know that we have reverence for the blood. Amen. How do you know that the blood still works? The blood still works. The blood is still willing. The blood is still able. Sister Sequoia, the blood is still healing in the midst of all. We're grateful this morning. Amen. We want to prepare ourselves to enter into uh, we want to have a scripture reading. I'm going to ask if Minister Buckley, if she can. Um, there's going to be a scripture on the screen um, that I ask that you could read that for us. And I'm going to ask if uh, Deacon Marcus, if he would please pray over the bread. I'm going to ask if Deacon Frey, if he would pray over the wine so that we can prepare ourselves to partake in this holy sacrament. In Jesus' name. 26th chapter, 26 to the 29th verse, New Living Translation. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and he gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, each of you drink from it. For this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of me. Mark my words. I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Oh Lord, we thank you on this morning, oh God. We just give you honor, oh God. We give you glory, oh God. We just thank you, oh God. God, we don't take this moment lightly, oh God, as we reflect on what you did for us, oh God, over 2,000 years ago. We thank you for the bread, oh God, that represents your body, oh God, that was bruised, oh God, the crown of thorns on your head, oh God, the nails that pierced in your hands and your feet, oh God, pierced in your side, oh God. God, I thank you, oh God, for dying for our sins, oh God, for taking the stripes on your back, oh God, for our healing, oh God. We thank you, oh God. God, we reverence you in this morning, oh God, because you didn't have to do it, oh God, but we're so glad that you did, oh God. We're so glad that you gave up your life for us, oh God. God, sinners, oh God. God, wretched, oh God, but you died for us, oh God, and we thank you for it, oh God. So, God, as we take the bread, oh God, we think about, oh God, God, everything that you went through for us, oh God, and we tell you thank you. We tell you thank you, Lord. We give you all the honor and all the glory, oh God, for the bread, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, this morning, as we gather together, Lord, as one body, to take on this blood, Lord. Yes, Lord, I ask that as we do it, Lord, yes. we do it in remembrance of you. Yes. Yes. And Lord, as we partake in it, each yes. and every one of us, Lord, yes. let us just reflect on yes. someone yes. out there that we're taking it for, Lord. Yes. If they're not here physically, Lord, we want to reflect on someone else other than ourselves. Yes. Yes. We're taking it in our body, but we're taking it for yes. someone else. We're taking it for other church families, Lord, that can't partake in it. And as we do it, Lord, this morning, Lord, we're doing it in remembrance. Yes, yes, but we're also doing it in future things to come, Lord. Lord, we're taking it as a church body, Lord, but we're taking it for everyone else. And Lord, as we take on it this morning, Lord, let it be blessed, Lord. Let it be fruitful, Lord. Yes. Let, let there not be any judgment yes. among us, Lord. Yes. And Lord, as 
we take it, Lord, we do for protection, Lord. Yes. And as we take it, you protect us. Yes. Give us what we need, Lord. Yes. Some of us are praying for different things, Lord. Yes. But uh, Lord, I just ask that you reach out as we take on it and touch everyone's prayer. Yes. The ones that say it out loud and the ones that say it in silence, yes. Lord. I have that I ask that you just touch them, Lord. Bless them as they take on it. Take it for them and their family. And also take it for the world, Lord, that there will be a change among us believers, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Chicken and Sue and Dickie Moore with the God pass out the sacraments. Mr. Kyle, if you'll lead us in singing that which the musicians play, please.
far from the peaceful shore. Deep in, staying within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the water he lifted me. Now say, am I? Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Y'all hear my testimony? There's some other things that tried to help. But when I realized it, we nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Not only did love lift me, but the love of God been keeping me, been sustaining me. The same love. The same love that lifted me. The same love that was on the cross. It's the same love that's keeping me every day of my life. I don't know about you, but sometimes I have to posture my mind intentionally towards the cross, knowing that God's blood is good enough. And that God's blood is not only with me, but it's covering me in all situations. So I'm thankful this morning. I couldn't sing the lyrics, but I could say them. Huh? Because they mean something to me. Yes. Because I know what it is. Yes. I know what it is to be down. But I also have a testimony of what it feels like to be lifted up. Yes. And it's only the love yes. of Jesus. Yes. Uh, the scripture says in the last days that the love of me will wax cold. Yes. I'm here to let you know that God's love is still sufficiently yes. ready to, to lift you and to yes. care for you. So today we celebrate. Somebody said we celebrate. We celebrate the love of God. Through his son Jesus Christ. Knowing that if it had not been. For the trip to Calvary's cross. We would be able to walk in power. Even when we don't feel like it. How many times you walked around. And you didn't feel like you didn't have any power. But the truth is.
get right with God. It might not be that you can get right with an individual, but you get right with God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You get yourself right with God. The other things are falling in place. Yes, sir. Because sometimes there's times when people won't reconcile with you. But I'm thankful that God sent his son that has reconciled us with him. So we have access to the Father, to the Son. Hallelujah. 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 Please serve them, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm not trying to prolong this, but I just want you to understand how when we take this and we remember who Jesus is. And we're thankful. This is not a sad occasion, but it's a celebration. Yeah. That God yeah. has given us life and life more abundantly. Yeah. The scripture talks about how Jesus was at the table with the disciples. He was preparing himself to go to the cross. What we say is the Last Supper. He sat with them and explained some things to them. And in the midst of that, he had some bread on the table. He had some wine and he took the bread and he broke it as scripture read by Minister Buckley and he told them to eat it for it was symbolic for his body and we know that his body went through the bruising and the breaking on the cross so we eat and remember what took place in the body by taking of the bread partake at this time likewise likewise we know that wine was there and he said that the wine was symbolic for his blood that was going to be shed for the remission of our sins. We were talking about grace this morning, this Sunday, on Sunday battle. And I'm thankful that we have grace to do what we can't do and did what we couldn't do. So we're thankful for the blood, hallelujah, that was shed for the remission of our sins. Hallelujah. You ought to tell God thank you because you're covered. You're not treated as your sin deserves. Huh? But the grace of God is a gift. But we deserve a wage. He gives us a gift. The wages of sin is what? Huh? But the gift of God is when you deserve the wage, God gave you a gift. You ought to thank God for that. Time part two. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to turn our attention to the screen. Amen. We're going to turn our attention to the screen. We're going to read our Apostles' Creed. Once again, this is not scripture, but it's definitely based upon the scriptures the Holy Scriptures, and it's based upon our belief and what we believe um, in our living of Christianity. We want to read this Apostles' Creed together, and it reads, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It is important that you know what you believe. Amen. Amen. We praise God and we thank him for this awesome opportunity of communion. You may be seated in the presence of the almighty God. Amen. We'll have those that will come around and assist you with the disposing of your trash. Let us 
bless the name of our Lord on this morning. Sunday morning manna, every first and third Sunday at 9 a.m. Learn the biblical truth through sound teaching by our very own Minister Margaret Johnson, Minister of Christian Education. Also, please bring your children out to Sunday morning manna. We do have classes for them as well. Join us for our midweek Bible study every Wednesday, 7 to 8.30 p.m. We are studying the bait of Satan. This is a very awesome Bible study, so if you have not made it, please join us this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Embrace the Christ Fellowship Church prayer schedule. The effective fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much, James 5, 16. Second and fourth Sundays, 9 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. Wednesdays, 6.30 p.m. through 6.55 p.m. Conference call every Thursday at 9 p.m. and the number is listed below. Evangelist Ola Samuel, prayer ministry leader. September meetings. September 5th, deacons ministry meeting at 7 p.m. September 13th, admin meeting at 6 p.m. And September the 18th, ushers and hospitality meeting at 7 p.m. We need children, youth teachers for Sunday morning manna. If interested, please reach out to Minister Margaret Johnson today. 2023 Kingdom Men Matter Conference, September the 8th through the 9th. Men get excited. Friday night panel service starts at 7 p.m. with Pastor Brandon Frazier, Pastor Eric Smith, Pastor Gina Stanley, and Pastor David Smith. Women, you are welcome to attend on Friday night. Our panel hosts, Deacon Marcus Dawson, Praise and Worship Leader, Elder Jabron Grice, and our musical guest, Larry Hill. Then on Saturday morning, prayer breakfast at 9.30 a.m. will be Pastor Bill Negron, Pastor Sam Crane, Pastor Brian McGrow, <coughs> Pastor Donald Thompson. This is a men-only event located at the Brunswick Senior Resource Center in Shalote, North Carolina. Our musical guests will be Myron Hewitt and Jeff Barton. Our next new members class is September the 10th at 9 a.m. Embracing Christ Fellowship Church Shoe Rally, Sunday, September the 17th at 10 a.m. Wear your favorite pair of shoes all funds go towards our building fund. So if you wear a size 10 like me, that means I will be given $20 on that day. Amen? Amen. So whatever your shoe size is, that's what we're going to give on that day. Let's get excited. Embrace in Christ Fellowship Church Building Fund Church Benefit Dinner with a night of gospel jazz. We will have Elder Merle. Amen playing the beautiful sounds of his saxophone. We will also have some others singing on that afternoon. Amen? Amen. And then come enjoy a memorable night with our chef, Lakeisha Goss. Okay. If you have not got your orders in or you have not got your eight orders, please get them in ASAP. Seats are filling up. Amen? Yeah. Mm. Marriage Club at Embracing Christ. Interested in attending our next marriage club gathering, September 24th from 5 to 6 p.m. And we are studying the book, Sacred Marriage, written by Gary Thomas. Consider purchasing a copy of this book. Most major bookstores should carry this book, also on Amazon. Henry Julius Ministry Academy. Next class, September the 26th at 7 p.m. Bishop Michael Frank's upcoming assignments, September the 20th through the 22nd, starting at 6 p.m. nightly, Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church, Chadburn, North Carolina. September 27th at 7 p.m., 
will be at Piney Grove Free Will Baptist Church in Bolivia, North Carolina. October the 5th, 7 p.m., Liberty Tabernacle Church in Shalot. Bishop says he looks forward to seeing all of us there. Have you contributed to our building fund lately? For the remainder of the year, please consider pledging $20, $50, or even $100 a month towards our building fund. Current balance, everybody, let's get excited. $19,109.61. God is moving in the house, amen? Members and partners, please consider giving $5 a month towards our outreach ministry. Thank you in advance for what you are able to contribute. Also for our plate sale, we are taking donations for the potatoes and the corn and the salad. Please see Sister Tanya for any more information. Amen? Amen. Amen. That concludes our announcements. Amen. We are covering ourselves according to the announcements. Um, at this time, we'd like to welcome all our visitors, if there's any visitors in the house at this time. several churches and I just they're dead and cold. I don't I don't know what's going on in them. They don't have the Holy Spirit. If you ain't got the Holy Spirit, if you ain't got the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, then God bless you. I, that's what you need. You got to have all three or you're not getting anywhere. And you, we know that Jesus himself died on that lonely hill of Golgotha. And my granddaughter who is autistic, I do want to bring her one Sunday. I hope she can handle it. She's pretty she's, she's she loves the Lord, and boy, can she preach. She might get everything a little messed up, but she will let you know that for those who are called by his name, will help themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, ways and seek God's face, that he would hear in heaven and forgive their sins and heal our land. Amen. Heal our land, God. We need a healing over this country. We need a healing over this world, God. Because I tell you, it's in a mess, and we need prayer. Prayer. Never cease praying. 
never yes. cease yes. talking. God yes. wants a one-on-one -on -one relationship yes. with you. And that means one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to hear your voice, not just in a church, but everywhere you go. You're praying in the hallway. You're praying in the bathroom. You're praying yes. washing dishes. Wherever you are. Jennifer used to ask me, I don't know how to pray. Well, just talk to God, and you'll be praying, and you'll know it. Yes. I, and when I start my prayers for my little granddaughter, when she spends every night for a weekend on me, we, we start with prayer. We, lift, we come humbly before God. And she just continues. And then she wants to pray for her little friends that are in her class in school in Wilmington and the autism class, a wonderful place for my granddaughter. And uh, she is very verbal, but there are a lot of them aren't. She has them in wheelchairs. But the patience and grace and love that she shows these children, God, because they are special. And thank you, God, for all these great teachers for our special needs children. Amen. And I hope y'all get to meet Bailey one day, and I hope she sets you on fire because she can. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Sinners saved by grace. Amen. 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 We have a song that we like to dedicate to our uh, visitors. That this time, we praise Christ. Can we stand and sing this song?
ask that we all stand in prayer of our offering. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this offering on today, oh God. Lord, we ask you, oh God, to bless this offering, oh God, a hundred, a thousand times fold, oh God. God, for we know, oh God, that we're giving on good ground. We're giving on fertile ground, oh God. So bless every hand that gave, oh God. Lord, we know, oh God, that if we give it, shall be given back unto us, oh God. Good measure. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. Shall men give it to our bosom. So we stand on your word, oh God. And we count it done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's show some signs in here. Put your hands together. The best in the name of our God. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. But it's word time, y'all. Hallelujah. I said it's word time. Hallelujah. We have a bishop here that can preach. We'll preach. Yes, he will. We will stand on the word of God. Yes, he will. So I encourage you to not just sit in your seat of judgment. Give him your ear. Quit. Give them your heart and let the words of God begin to penetrate through your heart and mind. Um, we will have the word of God through our very own Bishop Michael Frank after the praise team give us the finest religion. Here he is, the man of God, Bishop Michael Frank.
Thank you.
lay working. Hallelujah. Somebody say late. Somebody say late. Somebody say late. God has a purpose for you and for your life. Amen. Whether you realize it or not, you have purpose. Amen. Make sure you connect with God to know that. Amen. Amen. Because God, he makes no mistake. Amen. He's far too wise. Amen. To error in any way. So we are grateful. Amen. I'm just so grateful for today. Amen. Being in God's prayer. Anybody appreciate being able to come into a place? And to be able to commune with God. Hallelujah. Amen. My sister, she testified. She said, you can't do that everywhere. Amen. Amen. She gave a good report. She Amen. said, hey, it's cold. She said, the preaching cold. The music cold. <laughs> Turn the heat up, somebody. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I, uh, I realize definitely what she is saying. So it is great to be in a place where you can feel God moving. Amen. You know that song sometimes we sing, can you feel God moving? Some places, no. I'm ready to go. What we gonna eat? You're wasting my time. Amen? Amen. Amen. But that's not our testimony this morning. Amen. Amen. Can you feel God moving? Yes, I can. Amen. 
drink it, feel like singing again. <laughs> but she smiled this Sunday, last Sunday, she gave me the eye, amen. <laughs> she can feel God moving. <laughs> Amen, but God is so good, y'all. It is so good to be in the presence of God's people. Amen, not that we're perfect. Amen, but we are still called in spite of. Amen? Amen, so we're grateful to see everybody. It's grateful to see visitors. It's grateful to see extended family. Amen, it's just, I'm just excited to see all y'all. All y'all. Amen, I pray that you have had an awesome time in God thus far. Amen, I know I had, you had, I got me some. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm one of those preachers. Amen. I'm not just coming to preach. I'm coming to worship. Amen. So I have to have my experience with God. So I'm grateful on this morning for this wonderful worship experience. And we thank God for, amen, this wonderful praise team. The Oasis group. Come on, let's give you. Amen. Amen. They do such a fabulous job. Amen. We have an awesome music ministry here. We thank God for the praise team. Thank y'all so much for your faithful and diligence. Amen. Being willing to pour out. Amen. Not just up here just singing songs. I tell you, I'm not a fan of folks just coming up here singing songs. You're just going to sing a song, you can do that out here in the pew with me. Amen. Amen. But you have to give yourself as an instrument to be used. Amen. God is going to use your gifting. Amen. To stir the atmosphere. So it's more than just singing a song, right? Amen. We might talk about a little bit of that in the word, but we're grateful for them. We're grateful for the musicians. Amen. Amen. There's two mighty men over there, but they sound like a whole full out band, don't they? Amen. We thank God for them. We thank God for their faithfulness being here every Sunday. Amen. Helping us enhance this worship experience. We praise God for them. We thank God for uh, worship leader on this morning. Amen. And for Bell. Amen. We thank God for being with Peter. We can start the fire this morning. Amen. She was ready to light this place up. I thought you were going to take off sprint. Amen. I know you will. I know you. Well, listen, she won't wait on nobody. Amen. I love those type of people. Amen. Amen. Get in where you fit in. Amen. But we thank God for her. We thank God for Minister Margaret doing a fabulous job this morning. Sunday morning, man, if you've not gotten here yet, I need for you to work on yourself and on your schedule, your timing of getting to church and come to Sunday morning, man, because she's doing a great job, and that's what we're talking about right now. It is so important. Amen. We're talking about grace and um, what grace is, how we use grace. It is a great, 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 great doctrinal um, study, so we praise God for her. Amen. We thank God for Deacon and Sue working with the children. Amen. Amen. We sung a song this morning, you know what I mean? Never heard it before in my life. <laughs> Didn't know where it came from, but it was good. <laughs> they did good now, amen. Yeah, yeah. Did, did five and eight. Come on now. Yes, Lord. <laughs> amen. Well, we praise God for you and for them and for that song, amen. Thank God, amen. We thank God for our greeter and our usher at the door, amen. 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 Thank God for our booth, amen. We got both our folk up there. Yeah, yeah. You know we're going to have church with both of them in the booth, amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. So we thank God for Trustee Kanika, amen, and for Deacon Frey. Yeah. Them doing what they do to help us in the house, but also outside of the house to be able to get this um, service to those that um, are not able to come and some of those that can come, but choose not to come. I don't know why you don't come, but I mean, we got, we got seats left for you, I mean, so we wait on you. Next Sunday? Okay, right. next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Y'all tell them, say, come next Sunday. Come next Sunday. Amen. Now, if you tell them to come next Sunday, you ain't here next Sunday. They're going to be like, where you was at? <laughs> Y'all know how us is doing. <laughs> Amen. But seriously, we invite you to come and to worship with us, those that are online. Amen. I want to just give a shout out to um, um, Sister Alma and Brother Wayne. They stay in Connecticut. Uh, they uh, they are staying connected with us. They are our partners in Connecticut, and we thank God for them. Um, they have been a blessing to our building fund, um, and so we just thank God for them. And they are on the live every Sunday, so we thank God for them. Amen. We appreciate them being connected, even virtually. Amen. 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 Just take a second, everybody. I want you to just greet somebody, tell somebody hello, tell them hey. Amen. No, I want y'all to get up. I want y'all to get up. I I didn't give full instructions. 
Go love on somebody. Somebody needs a hug. Somebody needs somebody to tell them. Need you to tell them that you love them. might be in it until like 2026, but it's okay. You know, God got some, some fresh matter for us, so that's all that matters, right? Amen. From one passage, you can get like 70 different revelations, so we good, we good. Amen. But we started on last um, Sunday, um, this sermon that I was supposed to preach, it was just supposed to be last Sunday, but it got so good to myself. Um, it, it's, the sermon's entitled, The Danger of Mismanaging. So we are going to do part two. Somebody say part two. Part two. Amen. We pray that it's not a part three. Let's, Lord, let's get it all out today. <laughs> amen. But we um, praise God for this. Amen. The danger of mismanaging. And we, the core scripture of where, of where we uh, read from was in Matthew chapter six, uh, verse 33. Amen. Let's look at that really quick. 
Um, you don't have to stand to your feet. You can stay seated. I'm going to help you out. You've been moving a lot this morning, so you can sit back and take it in from your seat. But let us read this. It says that Matthew 6, 33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be what? Amen. Amen. I asked the question on last Sunday. Do you need God to add some things to your life? Yes. But I want you to know that this is a great principle um, that produces. Amen. Amen, that produces um, great things in your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. How many of you know that there's a lot of kingdoms out there? Yeah. It's not just the kingdom of God. Yeah. Amen, there's a lot of kingdoms out there, but um, he said, Keep, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yeah. Amen, and his righteousness. Yeah. That means his ways. Amen, it means uh, taking on the fullness of Christ. And it says all these things have been added. And certainly in that scripture, there's more uh, that, that talks that... Uh, uh, that the writer talks about um, the needs and the things that God will provide. Amen? Amen. 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 But we want to come from the de from uh, the danger of mismanaging. Part two. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, because you're awesome in all your ways. Yes. Again, Lord, we come and we have postured ourselves, Lord, ready for you to do uh, what it is that you do so phenomenally. And that is preach and teach the word. Lord, I'm grateful, Lord, to be an instrument. God, I know that what I say and what I do is not because of my uh, uh, charisma or my abilities, but Lord, it's because of your anointing. And so, Lord, I recognize that nothing will be done that will be beneficial, that will be profitable, that will be effective unless I <laughs> operate in your spirit. So, God, Lord, I'm asking, Lord, that you would just stand tall and wide in me, Lord, that they may hear your voice, they may see your face. Uh, Lord, I discipline myself this morning not to be a distraction to what it is that you have to say. But, Lord, I want to be a help to somebody. God, Lord, I'm asking, Lord, that as I come, Lord, that my thoughts will be your thoughts and my ways will be your ways. And, Lord, that everything I do will bring glory to your name. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you'll have your way like you already have. Lord, breathe on us as the word is being released. God, I ask that you'll do this right now in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we want to talk about the danger of mismanaging part two. And when we're talking about this mismanaging, just to give a brief recap, just to make sure that we're all on one court as we move forward. We're talking about the management of our lives and of our decisions, of our, of our mentalities, of our passions, of everything that, um, that we have in order uh, to move forward. Those things that are the receptors and also the producers um, in our life. And when I say the receptors and the producers, I say this in the, in the uh, I say it like this because um, we receive a lot. And what we receive, we produce what we receive. What we take in, we put out. If you want to take it real basic, if you eat something, it's going to come out. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Solid or gas is coming out. Amen. Amen. So we have to realize that what we take in spiritually whether it is of the kingdom of God or if it's of some other kingdom, that is going to produce some things from us. So we have to make sure that, that we understand us being producers, that we've been called to produce things of the spirit and things that are um, profitable. Amen? Amen. We're not going to, we're not going to um, waste our time talking about being, being perfect, correct? Amen. Because we understand that even in the living of this life that uh, we will fall short. But that's why we have grace. Correct. Amen. Because God has given us the grace that helps us to be able to bounce back from anything that we may go through. Amen. If we focus on our inadequacies. Excuse me. I was praising that word to make sure I got it out. I don't know. My mouth is dry here or something. I don't know what it is. Amen. But when we look at those shortcomings or we look at those flaws, sometimes it hinders our pursuit. And it hinders our momentum because we think about what we're not right. instead of thinking about what, what God has given us and what God has empowered us to do. Yeah. Amen. Just because you might not be a powerful singer doesn't mean that God can't use you in some other powerful way. Right. You know, so you have to understand that you are a producer. Now, with that, there's motive that comes with that. So motive, it connects to our desires, our passions. Because everybody that has a gift doesn't have the right motive with the gift. Uh, yes, that? Yes, Everybody doesn't have the right motive. If we can go down the street real quick, let's break this down again. There's there's people that are that are so-called friends in your life, maybe even family, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they have good motive um, towards you. Amen. Yeah. Tell you, you gotta watch those hugs sometimes. Sometimes 
Amen. You just don't know what's happening. So it's like we have to be in a place of where we are aware of motive. And not just with motive with other people, but motive with ourselves. And that's why we're talking about the managing of our life. The managing of the instruction that God has given us. How are we stewarding over what God has given us to do? Huh? That is something that we should reflect on daily. Why? Because it's bigger than us. And there is a danger that we can mismanage the valuable treasures that God has given us. It is possible that we can misuse the valuable things that God has given us. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it like this, that, you know, my, my, my children, there are some things that I will not put in their hand because they will mismanage them. And break them or do whatever. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you this, that sometimes that mentality of that childlikeness, it can carry over in your spiritual walk, but you got to mature in those areas. Because if you don't mature, I hope I'm preaching to somebody, if you don't mature in those areas, you will mismanage the treasure in which God has given you. God has given you something valuable. So we have got to look at it not as just us having just something else, but we having something unique that God has given us for a purpose that is bigger than us. Once again, I talked about the danger aspect of mismanaging. One of the things that I love that, that I definitely enjoy talking about in that introduction was about the danger, the dangerous waters. And how when we think about dangerous waters, we think about what? The depth, the deepness of it, right? But then I share with you that in a, with a teaspoon of water, you can drown. Huh? You can drown. Teaspoon of water. It says it's called dry drowning. So what that means is, is that even with some of the little things, if we're not careful and if we don't manage those things well, it can be a detriment and a hindrance to our life. Yeah. That's why we can't look at things as what size it is, but you got to look at who sent it or, or is this thing a God-inspired thing or something that God has sent your way or is it just simply that you want to do. Because if it's something that God has sent you to do and that God has called you to do and God has purposed you to do, our goal is to manage that thing well. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, I want to manage it well. I want to manage it well because I know that it's just not about me. It's not just about me. And we're going to talk about, we're going to get into the scripture because we want to see what it is that we're talking about from a biblical standpoint. Because I know that there's some preachers out there that would love to, that love to give their opinions of things, but they can't back it up with scripture. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you at that point in time that it is, it is your responsibility not to receive that into your spirit. Uh, just because someone gives you something, that doesn't mean that you have to receive it. Amen. Especially if you're trying that thing by the spirit of God. But today I got some good stuff that I believe that's going to help all of us to be able to go deeper into God because it's for, for such a time as this, amen, God has called us to the places that he has sent us. Now, we went to that 1 Samuel chapter 15. Does anybody remember the main character on last Sunday? Say it loud. Say it loud. Saul. Saul, thank you. Oh, what a trick question. <laughs> Amen. You're supposed to be preaching. I ask questions. <laughs> but I ask you that because I want to know how well you listen. I want to know. Amen. It, that, I gauge that off of how effective I'm being. Amen. But we were talking about King Saul. And what we understand is that Saul was given instructions by God through Samuel, the prophet Samuel. We know that King Saul was the, was the uh, a king of Israel. But we also know with the king, the king had a... Uh, prophet that was with him that would be the communicator uh, between him and God. The prophet would let um, them know, and you see this in scripture where there were many times that before the kings would go to battle, they would ask the prophets to consult the Lord about should we pursue, should we go forward? And because of that, um, that's why we see the importance of, of that, that, uh, that Samuel being connected like him and like others, the prophets being connected to those that were in position as kings. Now, I want to say this, too, because we, we can't overlook this. Um, it's not in this particular passage, but you read a little uh, farther back. We see that the people of Israel, they did not want to live life the way that God wanted them to. They, they didn't want God to be their leader solely. They wanted to have a king like the rest of the rest of the cultures around them. So they went to God and said, we need a king, we need a king. And God was like, you know, I'm enough. Even Samuel got offended and was like, they're rejecting me. And 
God was telling Samuel, they're not rejecting you. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. Amen. And sometimes with the principles that God gives, sometimes we can find ourselves rejecting God's ways for our life. Sometimes it's not a personal thing, but sometimes um, God can set something in our life, a, a way or a principle, a direction. And sometimes we are not um, really, uh, um, sometimes we don't really um, find contentment in the way that God has given us um, direction and ways and the ways they set family up and the way they set friendship up, the way that he, um, even on our job. And so in the midst of that, we can find ourselves rejecting God in ways um, that sometimes we don't realize. Somebody said, give an example. Yeah. You know, well, sometimes, you know, God will uh, put you on a job that you just don't like. And instead of you staying on that job, you'll try to create ways to leave that job. Y'all heard what I said? Huh? But I don't know about you, but I've been to a place before hmm, where I wanted to be released from that thing, but I couldn't until God said so. But the thing that you got to be careful with, because sometimes God will let you do what you don't need to do. Oh, y'all got to say anything? being real up here. Yeah. And so what we have to do is, is that when he released those things to us, is that we have to eat the fruit of our decision. Oh, That's right. That's right. Sometimes that fruit don't taste good. Yeah. Yeah. It's rotten, ain't it? It's just, yeah. Amen. It's a, it's getting, eating a watermelon before it's time is just not a good treat to me. And that's how it is sometimes in life. That's why when I say that, sometimes we can reject the principle or we can reject something that God has put in place for us. So we have to be very careful with that because this is what the people of Israel did. And because they did that, God said, well, listen, go ahead and have your king. Go ahead and have him. And so now that's what we see that King Saul is in place. And he's uh, uh, done some things prior to this point that was not in alignment with what God said. But we get to this chapter right here. It's one of my favorite chapters in um, the book of First and Second Samuel. And it talks about where God gave King Saul, because the king was the warrior, was the, the, the uh, commander-in-chief for us going forth and fighting. The instruction was is that, listen, Saul, I need for you to completely, somebody say completely, completely. destroy the entire, somebody say entire. entire. It's amazing how in little words they mean so much. Because yeah. sometimes we look over things. Yeah. Everybody, like, you didn't see that? No, I didn't even see that. What happened? Yeah. Because sometimes we can overlook some things that is very important. Yeah. Amen. 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 So it says, he said, go and completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation. It says men, women, children, babies, cattle, sheep, goats, camels, and donkeys, everything. And, and what God did, y'all there? He meant everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we see right here, one of the first thoughts that I gave you on today, look at my niece looking so pretty, uh, said godly instruction has a divine assignment connected to it. The divine assignment that this was is that there was issue between the people of Israel and the Amalekites. When they were coming through the wilderness, the Amalekites began to wage war against the people of Israel. So look, at this time, and this is, this is years and years later from that incident, God now is at the point saying, listen, I want you to go back and get, my Amal get those Amalekites for how they treated y'all. I want you to get them back. This is what I want you to do, King Saul. I want you to kill all of them. Ugh. Like the Godfather right there. <laughs> that was the divine connection to the assignment. And what you have to understand is that you can't think less of yourself because in your life, Brother Brian, there are divine connections to what God tells you to do. It's more than just building. But there is something that God wants to do through the connecting of the people that come to you. And sometimes we don't realize that we're as important as we are. Because we always look at those that got the, the you know, got this on. I feel like wearing today. But... <laughs> You know, the people that, you know, that had the big names and um, even and check this out, we even jumped to those that celebrities and we think, oh, they're just so awesome. Listen, you need to find the awesomeness in you. Thank you, first lady. You got to get it. You got to find the awesomeness in you because if you depend on others to find it, baby, sometimes you might be waiting for a long time. And even this is that you have to be careful because you got to be careful how people gauge who you are. Huh? How good you are. Because some people have opinion about you, but they don't have commentary about you. Yeah. 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 Huh? So you have to be careful with just 
accepting anything. You, you might think I'm not all that, and that's okay and well and good, but Jesus said I am. He said I'm the head and not the tail above me. You have to understand your awesomeness and know who you are. Huh? Because when you get that, you will understand that God has purpose for your life. How many of y'all really feel like God got purpose for your life? Y'all do? I was going to tell you not to hand up, but I love that you did. <laughs> Because there are people in the body of Christ that feel like, I'm not important. I'm not a part, because I don't look like them. You know? I, I, don't, I don't serve like Deacon Dawson does. Huh? You know? I can't, I can't do like that. I can't be like that. I can't be. Listen, first of all, comparison is a dead thing. Amen. Compare yourself to somebody else. Huh? It is the thief of joy. So you have to understand that when you compare yourself, be careful with that. Because the thing that I love about God is that God has already put some standards. He's already put some things in place that you can um, contrast yourself with. Huh? I can't, I can't work on air conditioning units like Brother Linda. But I tell you what, if you ask for a flathead, I'll get you that. <laughs> ask for a fill, I'll get you that too. Now, you go get, get specific, some of the other side won't, but guess what? I can learn. Right. How many of y'all are willing to learn from somebody else's awesomeness? Yeah. <laughs> huh? Yeah. How many of us, and I'm telling you, this is how the kingdom benefits. By us coming together and being able to appreciate one's awesomeness yeah. and to not come in competition. Yeah. I think you talked about unity a couple Sundays ago. Yeah. Not being competitive, mm -hmm. but understanding that this is something that is a blessing to my life. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's something connected to it. All right. The second thing that I talked about was there nothing that God tells us to, to destroy mm -hmm. has enough room in your life. Mm -hmm. Let me read that yeah. again. Nothing that God tells us to destroy or remove mm -hmm. has enough room in your life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what God tells us to remove or to destroy, we sometimes cling to it more closely. Yeah. How many of y'all, <laughs> this is a quick but how many of y'all can put yourself in Abraham's shoes when God told him to go sacrifice his son? How many of y'all can do that? I love the crickets in the room. <laughs> I don't know if I could either. <laughs> but here's the thing, and this is what I love in the lesson of this, is that sometimes the thing that God is trying to remove is not so much what you can see, but it's what you can't see. Because it's not so much that he wanted to take Isaac because the promise was coming through Isaac. What he wanted to make sure is that Abraham was trying, what, what Abraham was not so committed and married to his will. So sometimes what you see it's not really what God is trying to What he's trying to move is what you don't see. Amen. What you don't see is that you have attachment issues. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. What you don't see is that you really got attitude problems. Yeah. What you don't see is that you think you're healed, but you're really not. Yeah. Huh? So sometimes it's not what you see, but it's what you don't see. Yeah. Huh? So he, he saw Isaac. But he didn't see that God had a ram in the bush as well. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Huh? What God is trying to do, he's going to complete the work. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, man, let's get to this. The, the, the third thing I said, I'm still in review, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Loyalty is tested but never conquered. Yeah. I'm going to start right here and I'll move forward. Because I want to go to verse uh, uh, verses 10 through 12. I want to read that again. I want to share this with you. Anybody gain anything yet? Anybody's gain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Because I want I want to show you something. Tell you what. Hallelujah. It might be a part for you. Amen. <laughs> but read, let, let's read this. It says, Then the Lord said to Samuel, I am sorry that I ever made Saul king, for he has not been loyal to me and has refused to obey me. Samuel was so deeply moved when he heard this that he cried out to the Lord all night. Somebody say all night. All, all night. night. Lord Jesus, we are still all night for a fool. Anyway, verse 12. Early the next morning, Samuel went to find Saul. Someone told him Saul went down to the town of Carmel to set up a monument of himself. Then he went on to Gilgal. Y'all, we got to talk about this. Because one of the things you have to understand, and I shared this with you on last Sunday, it's not... Good. It's not enough to be anointed. You must also be obedient. Yes. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. It's 
It's not enough for you to be anointed by God if you're not obedient. Oh, Jesus. Look at, look, let's look at this right here because, see, Saul was anointed king, but he had problems with being obedient to God. Huh? So that means he had a loyalty issue. One of the things you got to understand is that with loyalty to any, we can say to anyone, to our brother, to our sisters, um, when, when we talk about loyalty, our loyalty will be tested. But it doesn't have to be conquered. There are some things. Can I preach this sermon, please? Um, I got this. I promise I got this. It's always on preacher kids. <laughs> but but it's, it's, it can, loyalty can never be conquered. Because one thing that you have to realize, and that I believe that we already know, is that in life, people will try to pull you from a place that you know that you've been called to. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. People will pull you. They will check this out. They will go to the depth of manipulation to make you think something different. They will try to take over your mentality, try to take over your thinking system. You'll find yourself doing something that you're like, what am I doing? Why did I do this? Because there was an attack over your mind. Because what the enemy wants to do with us is to divide us from connection and communion with God. If you ever see a moment or experience a moment that you know that God has called you to a place but there are things around you challenging you to remove you, then you need to really have a talk with Jesus. And you have to ask him, Lord, I need for you to pull the scales from my eyes because there's something that I'm missing. Somebody said, be honest. honest. Sometimes you got to be honest with God. Is this, uh, I see this, is this what I'm supposed to do? This is where I'm supposed to be? And God has a way of coming through and letting you know, no, that's not where you're supposed to be. Or yes, that's where you're supposed to be. No, that's not who you're supposed to connect with. Yes, that's who you're supposed to connect with. No, that place is not for you. Yes, that place is for you. But sometimes we don't have time to have conversation with God. Why? Because we're ready to make a decision. Huh? Make 150 decisions through the week. Yeah. And only about 20 of them is the ones that God told us to. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that we have to be careful with our haste. Yeah. Because we can find ourselves making uh, decisions that will put us in a place of where we are in, in as an enemy to God and not loyal to him. Yeah. Hmm? Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Check this out. You have to understand this about the anointing. <laughs> that when God anoints you, if you're not going to be obedient to him, God will take the enjoyment of the assignment away. <laughs> he will take the enjoyment away. Yeah, yeah, let me give you some Bible with this. Saul was disobedient, correct? Okay. The Bible talks about this in, I believe, in later chapter, I believe it's in, uh, let me see, in chapter 16 of this first Samuel, verse 14, it says that the spirit of God lifted from King Saul and then he allowed tormented uh, 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 demons to come upon his mind. Spirits, demons, who cares? It's all the same. Huh? So he was anointed, but the anointing did not stop him or prohibit him from experiencing something that was detrimental. Huh? Let me say this again. Let me, let me be worried. Pass on the word. Huh? What he didn't get uh, away with is consequence. Just because you're anointed doesn't mean that you won't get away with consequences, from consequences. Huh? Y'all listen to what I'm saying? Amen. Is this heavy or something? <laughs> Good. 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 <laughs> but, but, but check this out. Though you're anointed, if you're going to be disobedient, you will have consequence. Amen. I don't care if you're a bishop. I don't care who you are. Yeah, that's I, I, I don't know if y'all, I hope that y'all have been seeing stuff, but there's been a lot of exposure of those that are in the pulpit yeah. I've been seeing a lot of stuff being revealed. Yeah. Some stuff I have to keep scrolling because I don't even want to get in my spirit. Amen. Huh? But we have got to be careful that where God calls us, whether it's, whether it's to preach God's word, which we all are, we're supposed to all be preaching. I don't know what y'all preach this week to somebody else, but we all been called to assignment and we're all anointed, not just us up here, but we're all anointed. Somebody say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. What you have to understand is that we have a level of responsibility of making sure that we are producing what God has called us to produce. And when we don't do what he said, there is consequence no matter who you are. Come on, somebody. Amen. Somebody say, there's a consequence. There's consequence. Can, I can I tell you something else in this scripture that's really powerful? 
the, the, the bottom part, when it talked about Samuel, he was looking for King Saul, right? And it said that, it said, verse 12, it said, early the next morning, Samuel went to find Saul. Someone told him, Saul went to the town of Carmel. What he was doing? Setting up a monument. Setting up a, setting up a monument of itself. <laughs> Lord Jesus, what, what we have to understand here is that he had in his mind that he had done a good thing by killing uh, the, bad, the, the worst uh -huh. and keeping the best. Uh -huh. But he didn't understand that even with what he did and him desiring that, that glory, uh -huh. it put him in a dangerous place. Uh -huh. It put him in a very dangerous place. Because one of the things that we have to understand is that when God called us to do something, uh -huh. and even though he didn't completely do it, but even with what we do for God, we have to be careful that we don't try to set up monuments, celebrations, when people say, oh, oh yeah, I preached that sermon, didn't I? Oh yeah, I was serving at the church, wasn't I? Oh yeah, you saw me getting them that sandwich at McDonald's? Did you see me paying for it? Huh? Look, I got the picture on Facebook. See, God is he's looking at us and seeing that when he tells us to do something, do you want a monument for it? go live and, and, and try to bless people. Because we want monuments. Why we got to report all this stuff? Why did you really do it? Oh, you want a monument, huh? So what God told you to do, you want to bring a monument to yourself. Do you understand that God is a jealous God? Huh? He is a jealous He wants all the glory. If God tells us to do something and then we do it and we see the success from it, don't you start creating no monument. You give glory to God. You find a way to lift up the name of the Lord. You say, listen, this was all God. I saw somebody earlier, uh, there was something that was going on, and I see them saying all this stuff and all this stuff, and I'm like, baby, what you missing? God is going to get there. Because if you take God out of the equation, you have no numbers, you have no parentheses, you have no sign of nothing. So it is God that has done this thing. Listen, the alarm clock didn't wake you up this morning. Don't you get all excited? You woke up this morning, yeah. Feel like you want to be and everything else. No, it was God that woke you up this morning. Huh? Be careful because even in the small things, this flesh of ours, it don't want to build a monument. Huh? Come on, somebody. But we got to be careful with that. Let's go to the next thing, amen. This right here is really good. Jesus. I want to go into Josiah. That's going to be a different sermon. Verse 13 says this. Samuel that point. He said, when Samuel finally found him, Saul greeted him cheerfully. Y'all, this is going to be good right here. May the Lord bless you, he said. I have carried out the Lord's command. Then what is all this bleating of sheep and goats and low, uh, lowing of the, the cattle I hear? Samuel demanded. It's true that the army spared the best of the sheep, goats, and cattle, Saul admitted. But they are going to sacrifice them to the Lord your God. We have destroyed everything else. Now, now listen, this is what you got to understand. Because at this part, I'm looking at King Saul and I'm saying, Saul, you are delusional. <laughs> You over here celebrating, doing something you weren't supposed to do. Because sometimes, take this out. And we guilty. I've been guilty of this before. Well, I know God told me to pray for him, but I didn't go to him. But when I got in the car, I did pray for him. <laughs> How many of y'all did that? I did that before. So the need to pray for me. I'm better at it, though. I'm better. But listen, we will celebrate over Something that doesn't need to be celebrated. Right. Now, this is what God showed me. He said, listen. He said, there's a difference between sobriety versus being under the influence of something that is intoxicating you. Yes. Do you understand that we live in a life that we are being intoxicated with a lot of things? Yes. And I'm not just talking about that, that Henny, that Patron. Yes. I ain't talking about that, that, that joint. I'm not talking about that and those other highs that you can get. Yes. But sometimes pride, pride. Yeah. Huh? pride can intoxicate you. And it can get you to the point that you will not see things the way that you need to see them. And when you're operating in pride, your eyes cannot see soberly. 
Because everything that you will see, you will see you doing right in everything. Yeah. You will yeah. never be able to call out the wrong that you have in your life. That's right. huh? You will see everything as, I, yeah. I did that. Well, you know, I didn't you know, but, but I did that. Listen, we've got to be sober. The Bible says that we need to be sober and vigilant because the, the devil is proud of like a roaring lion. Huh? Can I tell you that when we operate in pride, we'll miss the roar? I was about to get in the water. I felt that. When you operate in pride, you can miss, you can miss the roar. You won't be bitter. You won't even see the enemy coming. Huh? Why? Because you're all in yourself. But you don't have time to be so self-absorbed. Who you are? Oh, that you're awesome. Like I know that. But baby, when you're operating, when you're moving in this life, you got to see what's going on around you. Huh? Not just that what's going on in you. And I'm gonna tell you, sometimes us as believers, God, we sometimes see we are some spoiled little brats. Yes. Yes. Me, I'm like that sometimes. Spoiled little brats. Because God does all these things for us. And we are allowing the things that he do for us to intoxicate us. Instead of inspire us. God is calling us to be sober-minded people. I want you to ask yourself, what is trying to intoxicate me? To miss what God is doing. For me to miss God's voice. To miss the righteousness of things. To, to miss who I should be. Huh? What is intoxicating me that's making me mismanage what God has given me to manage well? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. This thing will take you to a place of where you will have the lack of conviction. Where you will do things and you won't even have a conviction to do it. There's some folk that they, they will steal something off the shelf. It won't take you back. Because the conviction is not there. Well, I didn't mean to take it. How many times, uh, First Lady, have I walked out of the store and I had something? I said, Tiana, I did not pay for this. <laughs> and I could hear something in the back of my head. You better take that home. Check this out. Check this out. God done blessed you with that. <laughs> but the devil, I had to steal something for God to bless me. take my round butt right back in the store and I pay for it because I'm not going to allow that to get in my spirit because if you still want you it's still again if you still twice to get away with it you're still again but you have to be careful with what you're intoxicated with because that first hit won't be the last hit if you ain't careful huh? I didn't just smoke weed one time baby I smoked it more than once got drunk so many times and I'm over the toilet. Lord, if you get me out of this. <laughs> Next week. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Be careful with that. What is your pleasure? Come on, somebody. Listen. We got to be so careful with the voice. The voice. Yes, right. I ain't gonna tell you the voice don't talk to me. The voice do talk to me. Yes, yes, but I gotta talk back to the voice. Yes, right. I have to suppress it, suppress it. So I have to be in a sober state. Yes. Uh -huh. So we see right here that Saul, he is like delusional. He over well, I did everything. I did destroy everything. No, you didn't. You just saw, you just said that you kept the best. Yes. But you only said that I destroyed everything. Yes. Listen, baby, that don't make no sense. Yes. Y'all, that, now that's common sense right there, right? I destroyed everything, but you just said you kept the best for me. Yes, 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 yes. You see how when I talk about sobriety, yes. how sometimes a good thing getting a God thing? Yes. All right. Come that's on, right. somebody. Right. Got to be careful with it. Yes. Huh? Because that manipulation is strong. Yes, yes, yes it is. It's strong. It sure is. But let's go to the next. He says, this Samuel said to Saul, stop, mm -hmm. boy, you ain't too much. <laughs> Listen to what the Lord told me last night. <laughs> oh, man, this is good teaching, y'all. Listen, y'all got to hear this. What did he tell you? Saul asked. He was excited. He said, I'm saying, told him, said, although you may think a little of yourself. This was a strange time for him to say something like this, but I, I, I get it. 
You may think little of yourself. Are you not the leader of the tribes of Israel? The Lord has anointed you king of Israel. And the Lord sent you on a mission and told you. Somebody say he told me. He told me. He told me. But the care, he told me. He told me. Go and completely destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, until they are all dead. Why haven't you obeyed the Lord? Why did you rush for the plunder and to do what was evil in the Lord's sight? You have to understand this right here. I got something I want to show you, but I want you to hear this right here. What matters only is who God called you to be, where he called you to go, and what he called you to do. You have to think about what really matters in your life. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You have to think about what really matters because right here, what mattered to Saul was what he called himself to do and not what God called him to do. Amen. I want you to see this right here because this is a good teaching moment. Because it says, then Samuel said to Saul, stop, listen to what the Lord told me last night. What did he tell you, Saul asked. And Samuel told him, although you may think of that, da, da, da. Now, this is what I want to share. Because sometimes when, the, when we talk about the prophecy and we talk about someone speaking to our life, mm -hmm. we will say that God, and I've said this before, that what they say, God has already said to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I understand now is, is that some things that God will send, the message that God will send to you, it might not necessarily mean that God didn't say it to me, but I didn't hear it. Amen. So when someone says it to me, now I'm like, I I ain't heard that before, but oh, but yes, he did. Yeah. But when you're not so reminded in the spirit, yeah. you can miss some things that God has said, but then say that he didn't say that to me. Yeah. Well, that's good teaching right there. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But you have to understand this is where Saul was. In that place where he was on himself. Let's go to the next uh, verse 20, 20. Brent, this is good. This is the rap right here. It says, but Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better. Yes, it is. And submission is better than offering the fat of lambs. Rebellion is as sinful. Which? And stubbornness as bad as any stubborn people in the house? Yeah. Yeah. I pray for myself too. <laughs> so because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you yeah. as king. Wow. Now I want you to understand this right here. Obedience isn't about preference, but it's about what pleasures God. Yeah. Yeah. It's not about your preference, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. about what pleases God. Yeah. I want you to understand this because God wrote this thing down to me. And if you grab this thing, it's going to bless your life. Yeah. One of the things that God shared in the word of God, especially in the time of Leviticus, the time of the Torah, mm -hmm. that he explained that the aroma of the sacrifice, it pleased his nostrils. Mm -hmm. But yeah. let me tell you something. Let me tell you how we can operate in a, in a space where it is wicked. Mm -hmm. Because when we talk about obedience is better than sacrifice, mm -hmm. if we're not careful, we can allow what we give yeah. to try to be a manipulation. Yeah. Or try to be a way to get God's attention, but we're not obedient in the process. Mm -hmm. That's right. Think about it like this. Huh? Have you ever smelled something that was good, but then when you got there, mm, this don't taste good. Yeah. Yeah. This, check this out. This don't taste like it smells. Right. Did you use any seasoning? <laughs> you could have went outside, got some grass or something. <laughs> check this out. This thing is heavy, but it's real. it's real. We can find ourselves sitting up or sitting a sacrifice, trying to please God through the aroma of what we've done, giving him a gift, but in process, we haven't been obedient. And that's where we hurt God's heart because he don't care about, when it comes to the greedy thing, he's not so caring about that sacrifice. Huh? What he cares about, are you going to obey me? Huh? Have you, you got the children that have come and you try to butter you up? I just love you, mommy. Uh -huh. I love you, daddy. And then you walk in the next room, you see the name marked all over the wall. <laughs> Tore the whole room up from the ceiling to the bottom. Yeah. Huh? But they reeled you in with the, mm, the aroma. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where we have to be careful with our walk with God. 
Now, I'm about to get you out, but you got to understand this thing. It's because we're filling up our sanctuaries with a wrong, but not obedience. But we want the miracle signs and wonders of God. How can God trust us with the miracle signs and wonders if we can't walk in obedience to him? Oh, God, this is good. Huh? God has called us to a place of where we can walk in obedience. Where obedience is not you being perfect, but it's simply you obeying what he says. Huh? You can do what he says and still miss the mark, but God is still pleased because you went forth and done what he said. Hallelujah. So we have to see this thing of how we're managing with what God is telling us to do. Because with King Saul, King Saul, he did not follow through, meaning he mismanaged what God told him to do. Now, I'm coming down your street, don't know all your business, but I know enough that God sent this word to us to know that there's some things that you have got to look over. And you have to assess and evaluate and say, Lord, am I doing what you told me to do? Or, if, or am I just sitting up in a room to you? As a distraction. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. But God doesn't miss. The last thing I want to tell you that God doesn't want what he didn't ask for. Yeah. He wants your obedience. Yeah. Huh? He wants your obedience. Yeah. Listen, he wants your obedience. Yeah. Quit looking at what you can't do and do what you can do. Right. Once right. again, we always think about, well, I can't do this because I'm not this short. Now, you know, I, the rest of them just better than me. They look better than me. Their, their hair is more pure. Their shoes, they got more money than me. They got a man. They don't got a man. They, they got this. They, well, they sit right there and they got this going on. Listen, I want you to throw those with excuses away because God don't want to hear it and nobody else either. Somebody say, I got to do what I got to do. You do what you got to do because one thing I want to bring back to your memory because there was a time that you told Jesus yes. You gave him a yes. You said, Lord, yes to your will and yes to your way. I want to ask you, have you forgotten the yes that you've given to God? Have you forgotten that you told God that I will go where you want me to go? Lord, I'm not perfect, but Lord, I'll still do what you want me to do. I'm spirit and let you know that you gave God some kind of yes. And you need to make sure that your yes is not desecrated. Meaning that your yes is not dishonoring God. Making sure that your yes is not defiling God. That your yes is not infecting your life. And that your yes is not contaminating what's going on in your life. That this yes that you gave God that has not come to a place of where it hasn't blessed your life, where it hasn't blessed God, but that it has profaned him in some way. If I do what's better, I can give God what is best. So we have got to look at ourselves right now and say, Lord, Lord, the yes that I gave you, Lord, is it my yes or obedient yes? Or is it just a sacrifice? But I'm looking for some people in the house right now that's ready to make an altar where you are and say, Lord, I haven't been perfect all my life, but God, you've been so good. And you're so good that you have given me grace that I can stand right here and know my yes. It hasn't been fully committed in the past. The day is a new day. The day is a new day of grace. Today's a new place of mercy. Today is a new day of anointing. Today is a new day that I can walk in the mighty things of God. My past can't stop me because God, you gave me a future. God, I'm not going to let what they say stop me because God, you still walk with me and you still walk with me and you talk with me and you tell me that I am your own. So I'm not going to allow anything. Somebody said anything. Anything to stop me, not even myself, from doing what God has called me to do. I don't care how big, I don't care how little, but God has given us something to do in the earth. Can I encourage you on today? Don't you look at yourself, don't you look at your flaws, but look at the goodness of God. Because when you look at the goodness of God, it'll make you want to do some things for us. God is 
deserves my yes. He deserves it. He deserves it. My yes to God is not based on my feelings or my emotions or my inadequacies. The spirit of change things won't. Huh? It's not based upon that. But it's based upon what he said. Huh? We can't find ourselves living in a time now where we're just okay with living and doing any kind of old way. Huh? We can't live this life and say that I love God, but I can't I can't be faithful to him. Huh? That's what I'm saying. This faithfulness I'm talking about. I know you're not going to die every eye. I'm going to say, right. Amen. Curry, yes, we're not talking about that. Come on now. But you can get up in the morning and yes. put the best foot forward yes. and love somebody. Yes. That's where we got to start a lot of times. Yes. Come on, God. Somebody say, bring it back. Bring it back. Then we got the first, before that, work on even loving ourselves. Yes. How dare you not love yourself and God sent his son to die for you? Huh? He died for you. Ain't no other man or woman to do that for you. Check this out. I know I'm thankful for the armed services and they fight for the country. But if you put them to a table and you will let them know what you're not going to do, but you still want them to die for you, the acts are probably going to be a little different. Because they were like, oh, you, uh, so you playfully doing this. You serve a God that even in your blatantness, we don't want to talk about that because I had some blatant things that I've done. Some things that I do, God's still working on me with. Huh? But in spite of that, you, you have a God that has died for you. Listen, don't mismanage what God has given you. The managing of it well is the least that we can do unto God. Stand to your feet at this time. I don't want to give God an empty yes. I don't want to give God an empty yes. I've done that long enough. Can I say this? And some people say, well, I'm not deep into God like that. You know, I'm just, me and God, we just over here in the cut. We just chilling. I don't care where you chilling at. Come on, bitch. You need to be faithful this where you chilling. That's right. Let's be straight. Look, if somebody come to your space and they not loyal, what y'all gonna do? But we ain't even faithful to God all the time. But he still keep us. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Huh? Listen, if you're a baby Christian, drink the milk faithfully. All right. Come on now. Drink the milk faithfully. If you're a meat eater, eat the meat. Don't revert back. God has provided you teeth that you can chew it. You better come on. So that you can swallow it. So that it can be a nourishment to your life. I better not see you meat eaters having bottles in your mouth. Don't you do it. Because that's you going back. The only way in God is forward. The danger of mismanaging. That point one and we get out of here. said that what we're talking about we're saw after this point of being disobedient God lifted himself from him that spirit that anointing Saul even got to the point of where he was so used to hearing from, from Samuel about whether he should go to battle or not when Samuel died he had no way to hear God check this out Saul he made it where no one was supposed to be in communication with a median. A median is one that can connect with the dead. This is in the scripture. It's not me just talking. Saul got so such in a place of where he was disconnected to God that he was trying to live off of dead things. Huh? Don't 
allow yourself to get to that place. Move forward. Whatever God got to do to release from your life, let him release it. Quit being so uh, attached to things that you know they ain't doing nothing for you. And don't you bring me this, well, I'm worried about them. The Bible says, cast your cares upon him. Well, he cares for you. So you're over there worried about them. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I what is that? What is that? Um, That's not, no. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a dismissal. Yes, sir. And you're going to find out that dismissal is some of the best blessings in your life. Yes. Any of you ever had a spring clean before? Uh -huh. Get all that stuff out the house? Yes. I got to tap the garage right now. <laughs> but when you release, get clean them things. You will find space to be able to yes. breathe and to yes. occupy the earth the way that you yes. need to. Come on, God. So I'm here just to tell you, there's a danger in mismanaging, but there is a blessing in being a good steward. Yes. Is there one today yeah. Come on, that say, I need to give my life to Christ, rededicate, join the ministry. If you're that person that wants to come, I invite you to come right now. You know he wants it all today. If that's you today, I invite you to come forward. I'm going to ask the ministers to come up. I'm going to ask the ministers to come up. Can we move this table up here? Oh, some of y'all can go over there. Because one thing I want to happen today y'all can come right here. There's some of y'all that need prayer. Mr. Bell, come on. Some of you need prayer. And I need for you to come and connect with one of these ministers and pray. Let them pray over you. Let them connect to you. You don't know what God is going to release by the words that they pray over you. Don't let this moment be a moment that you be like, yeah, I'm good. You're not good. You're in a place where you need prayer. We all need prayer. We all need prayer. So what I'm saying is, is that this is your opportunity to have a one-on-one. -on -one. This should be called my name out. These ministers, they're going to call your name out. And they're going to talk to you. So have your moment with God. If there's something you need somebody, the Bible says that we're two or three. Yeah. Two, you know, right here, Mr. Where two or three are gathered in his name, that he's in the midst. He's in the midst. Don't miss this moment. Because God is not through with us. God is not through with us. God is not through with us. He's not through. Release the God on today. Release the God on today. Release the God on today. Yeah. Hallelujah, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, God. Lord, we have come to your Bethel spot this morning. Lord, not just out of religious practice, but we come, Lord, because we want to have an encounter with you. And God, Lord, we feel you in this place. So God, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you would just look at us where we are, God. There's somebody in here that feels like they're not even worth praying or praying with. But God, I know that you're able to transform that. And to let them know, Lord, that they are more than a conqueror through your son, Jesus. God, I know that you can let them know that they're the head and not the tail. That they are above and not beneath. God, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the accessibility that we have to you and to your kingdom, to your throne, God. God, Lord, I ask right now Lord, that you agree on your people. 
Breathe on us, God. 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 Breathe on us, Lord. Breathe on us, God, because we need you. We can't do it without you. Lord, we know the attacks are coming. Lord, but we know that you are able, that you're faithful. Lord, that you're just. So God, Lord, we come in the sanctuary this morning with intention. Lord, that we're going to connect with you in such a way that it's going to change the trajectory of our life today. That we're going to be going in the path, Lord, that you called us to. Not as perfect people, but as people that are trying to yearn to the mark that you've called. God, Lord, I ask for it. Lord, that you would do it right now. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I ask God, for you continue to make ways out of no ways. You will continue to make ways out of no way. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Lord, thank you, Lord. You're great in your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Sequoia. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Jesus, God. We serve you with our whole heart. With our whole heart, God. Lord, we repent to you, Lord, if there's anything, Lord, that we have stumbled upon or anything, Lord, that has created separation. Not you from us, but us from you. God, Lord, we want those things removed right now. Because, God, Lord, we come. Lord, to you, Lord, that you give them all things but fail. God, I ask, Lord, in the midst of everybody in here, whether one has come forward or not, Lord, I ask that you'll meet them where they are. God, Lord, that you would breathe on them. Help them where they are. Do it right now, God. Let them know just who you are and how you're not done. God, I ask that you do it right now. Your son, Jesus, name. Serve me. Serve me with you.
God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this experience on today. God, and I, I speak in the spirit, Lord, that everything must line up. The things that try to slow down, the things that has presented itself like it wasn't going to happen, God. Lord, I ask right now, Lord, that you would just rest the button up on the crowd of my head to the soles of my feet. Lord, I ask that you would give her an excitement and a zeal because, Lord, you're about to do some things for her that's literally going to take her to a new realm in you. It's going to take her sight to a new realm. It's going to take her mind to a new realm. It's going to take everything that she has to a different realm. God and Lord, the doors that she needs to open, God, I thank you, Lord, because you're about to open them. Lord, I thank you for the ways, the faithfulness that she has been that she's been waiting. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that in coming days, Lord, it shall, it shall happen. Lord, I thank you right now, God, because I know that you love her. Lord, I know that she loves you. God, I know that it's done right now. God, I know it's done right now. Touch her right now, God. Empower her right now, God. Cream on her right now, God. Lord, I know the strength that she has. Lord, that you have a place for her. Where you will be strong for her. That she matters too. God, Lord, thank you right now. God bless her, God. Ask that you do it right now with Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, oh, oh. 
house, oh God. Lord, we fill it with the blood of Jesus on today, oh God, that nobody will leave out of here the same. Now, God, we glorify your name. God, we bless you, and we tell you thank you in Jesus' name. Hear the Lord say that it's been heavy. But I hear the Lord say there's a release coming. He sees every place that you are weak. He said, but remember, I am the great I am. I'm the one that blesses. I'm the one that gives life. I'm the one that gives you life. And I'm the one that would redeem time. Where time will feel like it's not moving. But eternity is backing up and doing what time can do. My glory is for my people. I hear the Lord say, don't just use my glory, but abide in my glory. He said there's some situations in the house that is about to change. What happens will be dependent upon your steadfastness to continue to pursue him even when it's hard. But I hear the Lord say that I am available and I'm close. I not only have you covered, but I have you filled. Release right now in Jesus' name. You are dismissed.